I want to bring in now Lieutenant General Mark Hurtling, a CNN military analyst who was the commanding general of Europe and the Seventh Army. General, great to see you. Uh, a short time ago, CNN learned Russian President Vladimir Putin has appointed a new general to direct his war in Ukraine. How significant do you think that is? Well, uh, it's, it's interesting from the standpoint of command and control, first of all, Jessica. This general, a guy by the name of Alexander Dvornikov, is a typical Russian general. He's been assigned to the Western, the Central, and the Southern districts. And he's had the typical path of infantry commands, gone to all the right schools like the Frunze Academy and the Voroshilov Academy. But here's some interesting things. He's also fought in the Chechnya War in Grozny. And from 2015 to early 2016, he was the first Russian commander in Syria at the beginning of the Russian involvement there. So this individual has had a lot of experience with the kinds of things we've been seeing lately. Right now, he's the commander of the Southern Military District, and, and this may or may not mean things to your listeners, but he's within that Southern Mil Military District are areas like Chechnya, Dagestan, North Ossetia, Volgograd, and Crimea. So he knows the area in which he's serving, and the way he has conducted combat operations in the past has caused him to be, he's been received a lot of medals from, uh, from Putin himself, but he has also been the kind of executioner that we've seen uh, prosecute these kind of campaigns where there is an awful lot of civilian attacks, civilian destruction, chaos on populations, both in Syria and in Grozny. So this is a guy that is going to be asked to deliver success before the 9 May May Day parade in Moscow. Now, whether or not he's going to be able to do that, it's a whole different story because he doesn't have a whole lot of forces uh, to, to execute some of the attacks in the eastern part of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. But very telling as you kind of give us that context and lay out his history um, <clears throat> that he's been selected to lead that effort. Uh, Ukraine's defense chief telling our Christian Amanpour that Russian troops are regrouping in the east and then planning to advance toward Kharkiv. Uh, what does that tell you strategically? Well, I, I, I tell you, I'm not sure uh, that's an accurate read, Jessica, because as we've been talking about, you know, uh, you, uh, the Russians have uh, put about 120 of what they call the battalion tactical groups into Ukraine since the start of the campaign. Uh, uh, the UK has believes that they've uh, had about 20 or 30 of them destroyed. So you're talking about a force that's down almost a quarter of what they started with. It's not real easy to move forces that have been mauled and, and depleted to the point where we've seen some of the, the casualty figures and some of the tanks destroyed and just say, hey, we're gonna pick them up and move them from one area about 400 miles to the east and tell them to fight again. I don't think we're gonna see a whole lot of fighting from the Russians anytime within the next week from new forces. Now they're gonna continue to attack in Donetsk and Luhansk with the forces they had there. But considering the fact that their major effort was in Kyiv and Kharkiv, it's going to be very difficult to reinforce the East as fast as they would like to. It, it remains to be seen, but I'm not sure they're going to be able to be very successful, the Russians that is, moving forces to the East to reinforce, just because it's very tough to regenerate forces. This isn't, this isn't like Stratego or a, a video game. Those forces have been mauled and they're in very bad shape. You just can't regenerate and say, we're gonna send them into battle once again. Uh, it's gonna take a long time if they're ever able to get those forces combat operational again. So I think okay. Ukraine has a very good chance. But having said that, Ukraine's got some tough issues on their plate too. They've gotta to move a lot of forces to the east and prepare for a different kind of assault than what they saw in Kyiv and Kharkiv. Mm -hmm. And Ukraine is accusing Russia of a growing list of atrocities with yesterday's strike on a civilian train station, um, the latest possible war crime, but, but certainly others as well. Is this a matter of undisciplined troops, people acting on their own, or do you believe that Russian forces are carrying out a terror campaign specifically on civilians? And I know we just talked about um, the new commander and, and what his experience is, but do you think this is a concerted effort or is it them kind of looking the other way? Way. Can we say both? Uh, yeah. And what I'll tell you is this has been the Russian way of war for about 20 years now. We've seen evidence of it in other campaigns where they fought, where they have attempted to sow chaos and terror 
within the civilian population as part of scorched earth campaigns even before they entered Ukraine. But at the same time, they, I've said from the very beginning, the leadership in the Russian forces, both at the higher levels, the junior officer levels, and the fact that they don't have a professional NCO Corps allows this kind of action to take place unconstrained. They do not abide by the rules of law, uh, the rules of land warfare, uh, the Geneva Convention. They have been shown to do this in places like Grozny and Syria before. It's the same kind of campaign tactics. And you know, from the last reading I had uh, showed that Ukraine has documented over 3,000, 3,000 cases of war crimes, and they're continuing to document those. Uh, this force, I think, is going to be uh, held accountable both Putin, his generals, and individuals within the force for the kinds of war crimes they've committed. Mm, truly horrific acts. Uh, General Mark Hurtling, thanks so much. We appreciate your insight.